transmissions. All right. So, uh, thank you for coming on to the show today. Uh, sorry, it took a little bit to start out. We had a little bit of delay uh, starting out initially. Uh, so, today's guest uh, is Lisa Eastman. She's an author and energy worker uh, locally here in New England. Um, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we were just kind of talking briefly uh, about uh, cannabis, actually, uh, the, the discussions about, um, you know, the local benefits and stuff, just to kind of springboard the conversation. Um, when it comes to, I mean, for people not listening, the previous conversation was really just uh, my personal experience using cannabis as a pain medication, as an alternative to opiate. It's very, very effective, uh, but also the connections uh, to that, you know, in CBD being just as effective and being super popular now um with that increase of like popularity in cbd um i know justin i was talking to you about this the other day do you yes. think that do you think that eventually that the um the medical community is going to be on board with the cbd oils and stuff like that do you think they'll eventually hopefully kind of you know there's a lot of ben benefits <laughs> Right, but they're, it, they're seeing it a lot, and, and I've seen this, and this would be an interesting uh, perspective from, um, you know, uh, somebody who deals with a lot of the spiritual community and whatnot. There's a lot of people saying, oh, that's not, this is all, it's garbage. CBD doesn't work. Uh, hmm. that it's all, you know, hooey, and that's going to be snake oil. In a couple of years, we're going to find out that's garbage. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't personally believe Yeah, but I'll tell you that. something, humans love snake oil. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes. Right, right. I mean, think about that. That's We're talking about hundreds of years ago these you know nostrums and stuff were changing the world right 200 years ago now 200 years ago and yeah, the snake oil the mm -hmm. snake oil i was really nostrums. young i don't remember 200 years ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can't think back to my past life <laughs> well i mean think about that though cannabis and tinctures were all it was a thing then and there was no problems with it no actually it was um it was the only medicine there was a right. lot of medicine back then. Right. If you research um, flower essences, homeopathic mm. medicine, herbal medicine, you know what I mean? They, they would actually do amazing things with with that back then. That was very effective. Um, to me, that wasn't snake oil. It, was right. truly, it truly worked. So what happened? you got to think of, like, is it just because of, and I mean, here's the... I'll here's tell you what happened. <laughs> Capitalism, though. So came Capitalism out. Science came happened. <laughs> no, right, right, right. Science. Yep. And Money happened. Science and Capitalism, and yeah. yeah. Uh, it changed the need from helping people to making a dollar so that's where the question of when it became you know snake oil and when it wasn't really functionally helping people is that whole like that bridge of like uh and this i think could could, could kind of transcend into our discussion about um you know you coming on the show and being from a different realm of spiritual spirituality like discussions and stuff it's it's substantive it's not uh you know Food. It's not snake oil. So, in my opinion, I, I I think that you feel the same way. Obviously, um, I think that it's huge that that people are making these. They're talking about these well, new realms of thought that aren't. It's not fringe science anymore. There's there's some substance to this stuff. So, in well, my opinion, you know, I mean, I'm certainly am not a specialist in any manner on um, big pharma. Yeah, yeah. You know, to me, you know, to talk about whether or not the medical world will accept it depends a lot on insurance companies and the fact that I don't think that um, the medical world really wants to make people well. Right. I agree. So, Agreed. It's to creepy. me, you know, it's a it's matter creepy. if you know how much, you know, I don't know if it's true or not, but what they say is how much money doctors make off chemotherapy. You know mm. what I mean? Well, the question to me, is chemotherapy from... really doesn't have a um, long track record of success. Right. And I'm speaking from experience since my, right. my husband was diagnosed 13 years ago with terminal mm -hmm. lung cancer that had spread to the brain. He didn't have very much chemo and he's still alive, you know, so, um, but to segue this conversation, yeah. because I certainly am not an herbalist or a, a you know, I, I don't, I'm not into the tincture thing. I, right. I have a sister that's into it pretty yeah. heavy. She does a lot of research. So if I need something, I just call her up and say, hey, this is what that's I awesome. need. Mm. And she provides. So it's she's good to have our that. specialists. Yes, yes. it is. <laughs> you know, we do have our times and that we need assistance right. in, a, in the physical, for the physical body. Absolutely. But that's not my domain. Sure. My domain is um, helping people heal um, themselves. Yes. So which kind of brings us into 
why we're here. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that, I, I think that's great because I mean, the the discussion of healing, I think, is is there's so many different interpretations now uh, of you know whether it's it's superficial. Like, uh, just, you know, there's you know major issues with depression. What's the solution? You take a medication. Is that the best solution, or is that just a mask over yours? And no, I'm not saying. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I think that the I, I think it's it's wrong to, you know, to knock you know SSRIs, and I think there's a place for it for people in, in the mm -hmm. world. But I think that the reliance on that has shifted so much. Yes. Are you putting your foot in your mouth? Oh uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I am a little bit only because it's like I I think there's a lot of people that that are completely reliant on those things and to take away them completely is not a smart thing for people who you know are evol live you know, schizophrenic and, and live on these boundaries of, of yeah. where things are dangerous and the medications are important but I think that there's a lot of people also, also at the same time now myself included they were, they were they, look my doctor <laughs> ding. <laughs> not gonna <laughs> ding, ding. gotta love the uh, the shock mounts there it oh, saves yeah. most of that though yeah it does um, absorbs it doctor I, I want you know i won't knock him i think he's great but he's a medical doctor his solution for me when i you know uh, with the adhd you take uh take benefexlin it's an effects or it's it's i don't want to take adhd medication the solution was to do that not to get into my personal stuff so. so I have something to add yeah because one of the things and I don't know if this is too early to jump into the conversation of it but this is all kind of are we talking about things within the illusion versus things within our internal reality or however you would phrase that yeah okay well um, to me yeah that's a good point because to me we are talking about things within the illusion but we're jumping ahead a lot of steps there yeah 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 um, to me, it's, you know, to me, what is what is illness and what is the nature of illness? I don't work on that. I don't work on the physical level. I work on, I feel like I'm being kind of, um, I don't want to sound like an airy-fairy spiritualist when I say I <laughs> no. work on a spiritual level because I think that it is, um, I like to think of myself as spiritually incorrect, actually, but I think in order if we're going to talk about healing, we have to understand the nature of illness. Right. And to me, that all starts within. I mean, the whole, the, all the work that I do and the reason why I'm here is because I would like to start um, getting out in the world the work that I've been doing in this program that I've written called Everyday Alchemy. And the nature of that is where do you, how do you find the healer in you? I mean, I'm an energy worker and I do healing work, but I don't claim by any means to heal people. My job is to help people know understand their own illness if you understand your own illness then you can start to learn what you got to do to uh get well mm. and that's uh that's that that power is within you but we are domesticated <laughs> to um believe that we're power powerless over our illness and we got to go to doctors and so you know i don't know i can't stand the fact that um as a society, we've given all of our power away to professionals. You know, I don't 100%. give a shit. I don't give a shit if you're suffering from ADD, if you have um, diabetes, or if you get diagnosed with cancer, if you have a mental illness, um, all the way down to simply giving birth and raising children. Mm -hmm. You know, I come, I'm older than you guys are, mm -hmm. but my mother was old too, so I come from an old family. and. You know, my parents' generation, you didn't go to the doctors, and you didn't go ask a doctor about how to best treat your children. Now people don't even trust their own ability to raise their kids. Right. They don't trust their mother's intuition. Trust the internet, though. So they have, mm. right, they'll yeah, trust, exactly. Right into that. <laughs> they'll trust the internet, or they'll trust what their pediatrician <laughs> says, they trust what everybody else says, and they say, this is right, and this is wrong, and they go, oh, and they question, do I know better? My theory is, you know your kid, better than any professional knows your kid. Not that their input isn't valuable and I'm not taking anything away. The problem is, is we have robbed ourselves of our own power. Our own decision making. Yeah. Our own power mm -hmm. of not, I mean, and the reason why I say kids is because that's my thing. I raised kids, that's, I was a stay at home mom. I raised my kids, but I knew my kids better. I went, brought my, my kids had some issues, some health issues. And when I bring them to the doctors, doc said, this is what we recommend. Right. Okay, I'll take that in consideration. But I know my kid, and you don't. Right. 
Mm-hmm. More than once, outside mm-hmm. perspective. More yeah. than once, <laughs> I have been thrown out on my ass out of yeah. a doctor's office for not for re, for um, refusing their advice. But the same is true for pretty much everything. If I trust my gut and I know my kid and I'm, you know, and I'm open and willing to listen to what other people are saying, you know what I mean? But also willing to check in with myself and go, that doesn't feel right. You know, that's my power, knowing my child. Well, let's talk about our own illness. Let's talk about our own traumas. How are you going to deal with your trauma or your pain or your problems? Right. Are you going to go running to a therapist or to a psychologist or to a doctor or to a specialist? And if they say jump through hoops, pat your head five times, turn around in circles and then lay down and right. cry, well, I can, is, it, that, is that going to make you it better? It does not work. Because, I mean, from pers- personal experience, it's like they, their solution initially right out of the gate was opiates. And I did that for years and it sucked. I didn't like the way I felt. I don't feel good on it. A lot of people struggle with the addiction properties of it. For me, it was more physical aspects and the mental aspects i don't like escaping reality that much i like the video game every now and then like (laughs) holy shit man to doze out all the time and that's like the thing that drove me nuts is that you know here we are in a society where insurance will kill me with opiates first before they'll let me try cannabis it's like what so you know my thing is like granted now i still do you know take the vicoprofen or whatever i'm doing it you know to a minimum trying to decrease the amount trying to rely on cannabis where i can and and really that's more of an income kind of factor but if i can rely solely on cannabis only yeah. i'd rather do that at the same time it doesn't work completely to eliminate all the pain either i will give some yeah. benefits all right so let me ask you a question um but i don't want to be relying on that forever let me ask yeah. you a question yeah all you're talking about is pain management yeah. We're not talking about healing anymore. We're talking about pain management. Well, I think that comes uh, that comes with the losing weight and getting the ankles better and thing, which is I'm on the way to do that, but not as fast as I'd like to. And you know, so we that could sort of stuff. talk yeah. about that kind of stuff. That could be a completely different podcast. And yeah. even just getting into the topic of addiction, that could be a whole different podcast and oh, how absolutely. to relate that to yep. working that with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you were, what I'm guessing you were going to get into, though, is moving beyond pain management. What caused that in the first place? How do right. we get to know what's going on within ourselves that created this whole issue from the get-go? Right now, you're just kind of managing what's already manifested. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. My, my, I mean, my first question is if you really want uh, to... We didn't introduce Allie also. Allie. Introduce oh, Allie. 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 <laughs> Obviously, she's uh, uh, engaged to Justin and uh, works directly with Lisa. So she kind of uh, bridged the connection here with Lisa. Actually, I, Allie... I think it's really good... Uh, Allie uh, has been with me for many years. She was one of my first clients, That's actually. awesome. And I think yes. also a really great uh, addition to the conversation because of the connection to... Uh, for s- what some people may not understand the program, and I think it's it's great to have somebody who's uh, can kind of bridge some of those terms. Uh. And I think it'd be interesting to talk about how the program started in the first place, because it started because you were getting frustrated with your clients not getting the stuff that you were telling them, and there were discussion points. Yeah, that's kind of true. That's kind of true. But good. you have to go back even further than that, though. Okay. I mean, what got me involved to in being an energy worker or. And not even an energy worker. Jack's illness is what got me into being an energy so back worker. To that illness exactly. Mm-hmm. But what really got me into all of this, just the reading and the studying and the learning, was my own pain. Um, and not physical pain, but emotional pain. I survived a lot of trauma, brutal trauma as a child. And I found that so debilitating and so limiting that I could not live a full life. I couldn't even really experience life. I was on a mission to find a way to end my own pain. Um, I did the therapy route. I never did the meds because I am a recovering addict. Mm. You know what I mean? And so, you know, everybody wants to put you on meds. And my thing was, I'm a drug addict. You can't put me on meds. Right. I can't do that. I didn't feel like it was an option for me. Sure. So I was on a search, personal search, to end my own pain. But then my husband got terminally ill. And I've watched a lot of family members die of terminal illness. And I was like, okay, that brought that up the ante. Then I got into actual healing work. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it was really kind of ironic. I went on a mission. And I went on a hard mission to find a way to keep my husband alive. Okay? I watched 
My mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my niece, my mother-in-law, all die of cancer. I know what it looks like. I know the process that goes through. I know what happens through the medical world. And I was sure they would kill him. So I decided the day he was diagnosed, we're driving home. My husband looks at me and goes, what are you going to do? What are you going to do now? You know what I mean? If I die, you're going to be on your own. And I looked at him and I was very serious. I said, well, I'm going to become a healer. I have to. Because if I don't, the medical world's going to kill you. And I went hard. I studied behavioral kinesiology. I studied flower essences. I did Reiki. Um, I got into shamanism. I started traveling to Peru. I worked with, um, I went to, you know, um, New Mexico. I did sweat lodges. I mean, I, I went on a tail. Experienced the... The ayahuasca. Oh, aspects. yes. Yes, I did ayahuasca. I did a lot of plant medicine. I, I did a lot. Of, I did a two year apprenticeship in shamanism. I did a lot. I mean, I have a degree in behavioral science. I knew this. I understand the psychology of it, but there was, it wasn't enough. There's more than that. Psychology yeah. wasn't going to fix me, and I certainly knew it wasn't going to fix Jack's cancer. That's, that's fascinating. But what I found on my journey, really, was that, um, ironically, I wasn't going to cure Jack. Sorry. <laughs> you right, bud? Yeah, no, I twisted my uh, thing. Uh, on the leg? Every now and then. Yeah, sorry. I thought I heard We're that. We're going to get to that in a minute. <laughs> We're going to get to that in a minute. I thought I heard like a <laughs> I want you to understand something, okay? I learned that I was not going to be able to cure Jack. It was Jack's job. But in my search to find out what I needed to help Jack heal his illness, I found my own. And what I learned was, if I could heal my own illness, he could heal his, as you can heal yours. So I'm gonna ask you a personal question, Mark. Okay. All this opioid talk and (laughs) CBD oil and how you manage your pain. Yeah. How does your pain serve you? (sighs) Um, I don't know how to answer that question. I know you don't. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and unpack the rest of that so I can answer that question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, what I think you're asking by that uh, is is, it, and this is from what I'm gathering from my understanding of of the discussion of you know uh, personal illness and, and and pain and where a lot of it comes rooted from personal things going on in, in life and it could be personal up. experiences. It could personal be generational experience. experiences. Right. So I have a question. Yeah. The pain that you're talking about, just for clarity for people that are listening, yeah. is due to your ankles. Can yeah, you yeah. give us some information about what happened so, with your ankles? Yeah. Um, when I was uh, younger, I uh, had a skateboarding accident. Didn't cause any of the ankle issue. Uh, but they uncovered a uh, osteochondral defect in my, uh, uh, my left ankle. Uh, and then as time went on, I mean, I had surgery. Uh, they said that that would probably fix it they cut up my ankle drilled some holes on my thallus or talus i forget the proper pronunciation uh, uh, which was where all my weight pivots on uh, and basically that creates this bone uh, growth uh, that is supposed to create a cushion that's missing uh, so not like grinding the bone on there all the time uh, so it, both of these ankles have defects i didn't find out about the other one until i was a little bit older i kind of knew that might be there but i procrastinated the shit about it because i don't like going to doctors might be a uh, part of the thing. I really hate going to doctors. I also, at the same time, kind of am a hypochondriac about a lot of things too. So it's weird. It's a weird thing to navigate because uh, uh, I think I'm, I'm worried about a lot of things that aren't always necessarily uh, substantive. Uh, but aside from that, the, the ankle thing uh, I discovered, uh, you know, putting it off was a bad thing. They went in, they did a second surgery in 2014, but didn't put in pins. Uh, and basically, what they're saying is that. I need to lose weight uh, before they go in and do any more surgeries. And I agree. I mean, I, you know, being 300 something pounds wasn't helping it. I've lost like 70 pounds in a year, which is awesome. Uh, but, uh, and that's with no exercise. I was with changing diet, not the best, healthiest ways. Uh, I haven't been eating super healthy, but I have cut my caloric intake drastically. Um, so it's a birth defect. Uh, so it's defects. Yeah. Birth defects in both ankles. Uh, that, is there an injury? Uh, there is is exacerbated uh I, I think points of injury caused by my weight uh but they are ultimately something that they can they can try to correct but if i 
don't give it the six weeks or if I go back on with a lot of weight, I can undo everything that they're... So I think that's their concern of going back in and do the surgeries. Yeah, but what if um, all of this... I mean, I don't know you that well. Mm. And, you know, I feel like this is this is kind of... It's kind of a complicated and confusing conversation because to mm -hmm. me, this is what happens when I try to talk to people is we end up jumping into the middle. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now it's like I'm going to throw some things at you that yeah, are sure, kind of... Sure. No, I um, think that it opens up the conversation about the program, though, which is, I think is important. So too. to me, it's like, okay, you have a genetic problem. So you came in on it. Mm -hmm. So it's probably something that's generational. It could even be karmic. But I don't care. I don't care if he was there because right now you live it, you own it. Um but it doesn't change your responsibility toward it. So it brings me back to the question, how does your pain serve you? So, I mean, I guess I would have to ask you how, what you exactly mean uh, by that. Uh, and, and more so, I, I think I kind of understand, but I want to make sure everybody else understands. Well, too, it's, a, it's a question that's difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, I just did this um, exercise with, one of my group members the other day and we were asking about she was asking me questions about positives and negatives and to me sometimes the negatives are positive by in me mm -hmm. um, but yet they're negative so let me give you an example sure um, if I was going to look at the negative of my own personal pain I would say a negative word associated that would be that it limits me okay so she asked me what would be a positive like can you put a positive on like a positive word for not having pain and that tripped me up a little bit because I'm thinking I don't have a reference point for that that's true. I don't have a reference point for no pain I've always had pain so hmm. my oh, positive my yes. positive <laughs> word for not having pain or, or better yet, my positive word for pain. My negative word is that it limits me, but the positive word that I have for it is that it provides me with a lot of excuses. Yeah. There's lots of things I don't have to do because my pain is my block. Sure. I can't do it because I have this pain. That's, that, okay. So, and I would, I would say, just so I, before I forget, I think that my pain would serve me um, in, and this is more, I'm, uh, I'm not connecting this to the ankle pain, but I think that this is interconnected. And, and, and I may be wrong. I'm totally, Your I ankle. love to self-introspect <laughs> here. Uh, I do this all the time in my, in my, I go to, you know, my counselor and whatnot. And she, I'm sure, loves to listen to me talk to myself the whole time. Uh, <laughs> I think that it drives me. It pushes me. Pain is something that I've always kind of dealt with. Like, I, I dealt with stomach issues since I was younger. I've dealt mm. with, you know, getting made fun of, mental, you know, being, you know, th those are all your know, personal mental anguishes. Or but I think the one thing that the limitations, because it li you're saying the net positive and the negative, it limits me. Mm -hmm. But I'm not the type of person that likes to be limited. I'm the very... Fuck you, rebel! <laughs> you know, remember when I was a teenager? You. Fuck you! Care. You know, rah, I'm gonna fight back. So the last thing <laughs> I want to do is be pushed down by it. Lost my job? Fuck that. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start a podcast. I'm yeah. gonna, you know, I, I lost my job because I'm not capable of pushing myself as hard on the sales floor anymore. I'm not able yeah. to do. Well, what am I good at? What am I gonna drive myself at? There's always, for me, there's always this this tumultuous thing in my life that I've always got to battle, and I'm always gonna have this. We'll say the adversary. Okay, so, so let me let me let me uh, stop you there. Okay, so you're looking, you're spinning this on its head, right? Mm -hmm. And you're saying my pain limits me, and now you're saying, but it also gives me this fight. It gives me a drive. A okay, which is a good thing. It is. Okay, so now I answer this question: mm -hmm. Does it take your pain away? The uh, the, the the feeling of uh, music and driving, you know, pushing towards this stuff. Absolutely. It absolutely, it? It, it makes me not think about a man who's just wincing because your ankle is in so much pain and, and, while doing the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I feel it. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, there's times where like I twist or something, and it like uh, you'll hear like that pop, and it, it's a spike of pain. I thought All I right, heard so, something like that. It was like but, suction cup. But but immediately, <laughs> I'm not sitting here and, and overwhelming myself in pain. To be fair, uh, about 20 minutes ago, I just took two Vicoprofen, uh, so this could be you know uh, them kicking in. But I am also noticing what you're saying, and it's absolutely true. When I'm focused at home and I'm, you know, 
deeply engorged in a video game or I'm playing with Gavin or doing something I really love doing, music, I, I stand up and put myself through excruciating amounts of pain for an hour and 20 minutes at practice every week because I have to play music. And I could sit, but I can't play and sing at the same time. And it, it hurts a lot and it's hard to pu push myself through it, but I'm not willing to... I'm not willing to back down, but that while I'm doing it, while I'm playing, I'm not thinking about the pain at all. All I'm thinking about is that raw release, that feeling of real natural endorphin push. Uh, that is just, it feels like I'm centered to the universe. So, I mean, to answer your own question there, I think that that, that could be very a very good connection to where I'm not thinking of pain and, and whatnot. It's not as excruciating and difficult to manage. So where would you rather be? Oh, I would always rather be doing something that I'm passionate about, always. Even if it adds to your pain? Even if, well, yeah. That's, that's, Isn't that an interesting That learning. is an interesting perspective. So what would happen? I could never ha not have music. Oh what would happen yeah. if you didn't have music and you didn't have video games and you didn't have the... These outlets. The, yeah, if you didn't, well, I won't even call them outlets. What would happen if you didn't have... So, well, you know what I call them? I call them breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. What would you do if you didn't have those breadcrumbs? And all you had was the pain. I could totally see myself uh, falling into myself, uh, into an addiction or something and let myself go. Okay, Realistically, so, just being... So what would it mean to be healthy? What uh, would it mean to be peaceful and be okay and pain-free? Um, what would that look like? <laughs> Both of my ankles cut off and cybernetic, <laughs> awesome, like gun machines for it. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm sure that would be painful. Exoskeletons. Big, exoskeleton feet. Super robot. You have never heard of phantom pain, have you? <laughs> no, oh my God, I know. I actually have. And I, I Duma Key uh, is an amazing novel by Stephen King uh, that is about a guy without with a missing limb, a phantom limb. It's unbelievable novel, by the way. Anybody who hasn't read it? I got to catch up. Oh. I have a lot of catching up to do, dude. Yeah, well, we're going to talk about your writing in a little bit. That's oh, a, yeah. <laughs> towards the end of this. I don't want to get off track. Yeah. Um, <laughs> something, he's a very good writer. I, Is I don't he? know if you I guys know knew that. this. It's amazing. He doesn't know it himself, <laughs> even. I didn't notice it until really, really... We'll approach it later. Anyway, uh, my it's, head it's is amazing. expanding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, no, it is pretty cool, though. Um, just saying. Shut Thanks, that. man. <laughs> uh, the, the thing that I think... With, without I don't know what I would do without music. I don't know what I would do without those. Oh my gosh! I've never really like put put it into that perspective. I think that's a very intricate well, way of looking at. Well, it. don't you think that it's interesting that people totally equate their pain with their passion? I've never ever made that connection before until now, and I don't know that it's always necessarily true 100 percent with all people, but that makes sense. That is true with all people. Yeah, it, no, I, I was gonna say I mean, it makes it would make sense that it would be. Uh, but my job. Which is and a that, huge moment for me. My <laughs> job is to get say. you to a point where you can find all of the things, yep. the invisible things that you don't even know are there yet, Right. Um, work through them to get you to a place where um, you can be okay. And then if music is what how you choose to live in full expression of who you are, then you can live in that expression, but you don't have to do it as attached to the pain. Right. You know, you ever heard about great writers or great musicians that have to put themselves through suffering because they don't feel like they can do their art unless they're in pain? Yeah, yeah. You know, that is not true. But a lot of people say that it's necessary. You don't think it's that not. it's artistically necessary? No, I do not. I mean, look at all some of the greatest art and music ever created, and you don't think that that was a substance of pain? I absolutely do believe it's but a... But it's not necessary. Well, it's not even preferable. It's not preferable at all, though. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My it's thing not is, preferable. <laughs> would you prefer to be able to live in a full expression of who you sure. are without the pain? But I don't know that I Wouldn't would. you want that expression to be um, driven by love I, and not by pain? I don't... I think happiness writes white. I don't think I ever could. 
I, I think that pain is what write, what writes the music for me. I, I think that I, I when I say happiness writes way, that's a Harvey Danger reference. It's a song, but I agree with that. Like I feel like a lot of times, uh, that's where I block. I can't write about the things that well, I love. Hey, I'm not passion. trying to rob you of your experience. No, no, no. no I just no, I think no, that. No, but listen to what I'm saying. I'm not trying to rob you of your experience because all of us have a story and all of us have pain. Sure. Right, and that contrast creates the the highlights and the dark spots and the shadows of the tapestry of your life. Right. What I'm saying is that you don't have to live in that pain in order to be able to express it. In fact, you know, when I first started doing this, I've worked with publicists and all this shit, right? And um, one of the questions that people always ask me is who is this work for and why would you want to do it? And, you know, this is a lot of years in the making, this program. Yeah. Okay. Um, I used to always say it's for the suffering motherfuckers. Yeah. It's for the suffering bastards. Because people ain't going to look at this stuff and they're not going to do this work unless they are in so much pain that they can't stand themselves anymore. To me, this is a, it's a way, it's a path out of hell, but it's work. It's not a magic potion. I could I could sell snake oil yeah. much quicker. But you I could charge $1,000 for a vial of snake oil and say, this will heal your life and I would be rich. Right. But I sell this package for $120 and everybody's going, no. It's like, well, this would heal your life if you did the work. Right. Okay. So my question is, I mean, my answer to the question is, the work is for the suffering motherfuckers. Okay. And why would you want to do it? Because it's a way to free yourself from hell. That's kind of your own personal private hell, and we all got one. But just recently, actually, I realized there's so much more to it. There's so much greater of a reason to do it. It's exactly what we're talking about. Because wouldn't it be great? Could you imagine what you, or any human, free of pain and suffering, could actually create? Could you imagine if you weren't tethered by that or limited by that or defined by that pain? You would be so much more creative and your what you could produce would be so much richer and so much more beautiful. No, I agree. I think that it, it, it holds us back at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of drive from it, but at the same yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and what do you want? What message do you want to send? Now, I know, me yeah. and Ali, we have had this conversation about music. Yeah. Okay, like, I know when I was younger... You know, I've suffered a lot of abuse in life. Yeah. And that pain had no place to go. You know, it's very trendy these days to say, just let that shit go. Just let yeah. that go. Well, let me tell you, there's no the, place for it to go. Right, right. There's no fucking place for it to go. You find a place for it to go. You mm. gotta, you got to find Chill. the path. You mm. truly do got to find the path oh, to let it go. That. So when I was younger and in a lot of pain, you wouldn't, have known, you wouldn't have known that about me if you knew me. If you were looking at me, you wouldn't know that because I, too fought because of it i fought like a bastard and my fight was what i had and my fight was what i i was my claim to fame but you know what i love sad music yeah when i listened to really sad heartbreaking music it resonated with my pain yeah you um, have that connection to it it's that, like it's yeah this like, person gets me man yeah, they yeah. got my pain too <laughs> you ever and, just listen to that song and just bald your fucking eyes yes. out just like you listen to it and you just it, it, I, I hate the word vibe because it's so trendy. <laughs> well, I love you just, it. You just vibe on it. like <laughs> No, it's just the trendy part. On, on and it, But I agree. You completely vibe on that music and you feel so connected to it. Um, but is that what you want to... Is I mean, to me, when you're there, when yeah. that's where you are, that is what you'll produce and that is who you'll get to vibe with it. Sure. But my thing is, can you, can you create something yeah. so much more beautiful right. that raises that vibration and that brings the old listeners or the old people that are with it up in vibration as right. well? Right. Instead of the... the oh, oh I, and I completely agree with that because, I mean, for a long time, and, and not to... We listen, look, we listen a lot of metal. We listen a lot of aggressive music. But oh, for yeah. me, uh, musically, it's always been a, a point of um, expression uh, and it's totally therapy. And I hate to say that it's not more than that uh, for anybody who may ever, you know, in the future ever look at my music and see there's some sort of meaning in lyrics. And, and there are to me, but it is a lot more of an abstract um, Jackson Pollock kind of thing where it's just... Yeah. And just bleh. keep it mystical, <laughs> right? Just throw it all out, and just kind of get it all out because it just it has to get out, and that's my only way to express it. Yeah, but, but sometimes but... That, it's acoustic, and sometimes it's not mm. like Unrest and Transit was. Oh, yeah. It's just this 
balls to the wall, full throttle metal, especially <laughs> just really, really aggressive. Uh, you know, where a lot of the stuff we write is just super ambient and you know, <laughs> soft and, and, and expressive. I mean, I, I have some real passionate, you know, feeling stuff, but I don't think I could ever say that I've ever written anything happy, and I don't know that I ever could. Or that it would be anything of good quality. It's like neutral, if I did. neutral that's at weird best. To say that, no, it's I, not weird. It's I, a I very common it's belief. Weird that, like, I don't know but, if I could ever write anything but happy. Uh, happy is to me, or it's not even positive. on the table. The happy is not even on the table. Nor is positive. What I'm saying is, is it it can be real without being your pain, right. without being some kind of ah, you know what I mean? I'm sure. telling you, that's why I don't think that is really any different. That's why there's a lot of metaphysical and a lot of spiritual stuff out there that's it's, very, it's just, ah, you know what I mean? But, but even <laughs> neutral. Well, I shouldn't no, say No, I'm that. talking no. true, honest, real. No, 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 I, I know what you mean. I just mean like, there's sometimes like when we write something that is just no lyrics involved or that's just guitar parts and kind yeah. of like experimental and kind of like more math. That's my favorite math right there. Kind of just... influence, something really technical where we're just like really into the, the writing aspect of it. I feel like that that would be a good example of something that's super positive and it's not really bound to any specific feeling uh, be, remains kind of neutral. But it still has a vibe to it and a feeling to it. Like oh, some of the thing. instrumental stuff that you've written, Justin, I know a lot of people have said like it sounds really like mania. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it does have its own. Yeah. So, no, no, good with dark. That's there's about still that. there's still a <laughs> flavor to it, but there is. Um, but that's not really what you're getting at. Um, with the things that are either super depressive or super well, like happy me, and positive because it's it well it brings pen- me back to the you know like what you're describing in my opinion is expressing your emotions yeah. you know it's like you're saying you, some of it has a lot of rage or anger in it and some's tense and some is you know it, it sounds yeah. like it's all like an expression spectrum. of your emotions whatever the spectrum may be i would agree yeah and what i'm saying it's is <laughs> is your emotions the truth of you are you your emotions? Yeah, I mean, I. No, the I, answer is no. I, you are not your emotions. I feel like I am a lot of times. Let me give you some cue cards. No, <laughs> the I answer feel, is no. I know, but I feel like I'm driven by those so many. Because you and are, because like you're that, human, that and that's what humans do. Are always emotionally based. Not always, but yeah. A lot and of most times. people don't know the different. I don't want to admit that, by the way. It, aspects I, I within themselves. <laughs> this is why I say Act it's a difficult conversation yeah. because we're having have a conversation some... from the middle. Yes. And it's very hard to have a conversation from the middle. The work is very difficult to understand. Sure. And I do want to say that I didn't make this shit up. Right. I didn't make this shit up. It was given to me. Yeah. I had 12 years, give or take, 12 to 14. I can't really remember what year they stopped. But 12 to 14 years of visions. It was given to me, and it doesn't always. So this is fascinating too, because I have I have gone through a good amount of this, whether you're aware of it or not. I, I have I've 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 been from a far distance, kind of observing over the period. Because I mean, Ali and Justin and I have, we've been friends for years, and 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 you've Can been. I uh, <laughs> she's been going to you for it's years, okay, and uh, I mean, I think that there uh, is definitely like uh, an understanding that I've kind of I've been you know. Uh, observing over a period of years and the thing that I find fascinating about that whereas it's coming from that type of place a vision is that it seems so much more substantive than that not saying that I'm discarding that but for other people not hearing it from a different perspective or somebody who may not believe I totally believe in a lot of uh, things that are uh, not necessarily mainstream Uh, my thing that I'm saying is is that with it coming from a vision like a, a um, a, a other Would consciousness you... place a place from uh, another form of consciousness is not like somebody not a person giving it to you on a piece of paper per se um, it looks so much more uh, it makes it just makes a lot of sense looking at it from behavioral standpoints and if you're saying like behavioral alchemy uh, really yeah. we'll air it out afterwards <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Oh, jeez. 
What have I done? Oh my god! <laughs> oh. I'm making it. Mother, no, Ellie's gonna let me smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I never you ever allow me. this. Look, but I think it might help much. with the grounding and getting the conversation because I feel like we've been it's for the guests, talking Ellie. about it's all, all the these. Yes. Different thank you very things. much. You're welcome. Because actually, you know, the you, you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let me take it from here. Okay. I'm sorry. You probably should have sat next to me. No. Smoke. <laughs> do you want to you watch Allie? No, Do you want to sit cool. over here? I'll sit over there. The door's open. It should be fine. Okay. We'll fan it out afterwards. We'll get the fan. And I can whatnot. feel the, all right, now we're going to get okay, it. Okay, <laughs> now I can talk. Yeah, yeah. Smoking helps me a lot. No, I... Okay. Um, you know, this is exactly why I wanted to do this podcast. And the reason why I use words like, I believe my work is spiritually incorrect. I really don't give a fuck if anybody believes about my visions. You know what I mean? And where do they come from? I don't know. It's a basic concept. But that's that's the thing that's interesting, though. Where do they come from? And that That's what's so much more important, is because there's a place that all of humanity, all of art, all of music, all of that... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, you asked a question, then you just kept talking. Sorry, so. I, I didn't... <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I guess I asked it like like as a... Like a hypothetical yeah, yeah, yeah. or a, what do you call it um, I, and, and I'll shut up shortly rhetorical after, you're, you're right. it's a rhetorical, rhetorical question but I'm kind of curious uh, where does all of this come from all of human everything I mean because you got to think about it. there's hey, a lot that comes from this this point there is and you know I am not professing to know the answers but I can tell you what I do know all right um, first of all there's you know everybody talks about life is a mystery Right? I mean, there's mysteries we're not going to solve. But there's mysteries we can solve. There's four questions I always ask people. And one of them is, you know, um, leading to this idea is, are you teachable? Because not everybody is. Okay? Humans know what they know. Okay? You know what you know. And you know what you don't know. You know your name is Mark. Yep. You know you can't do brain surgery. Okay, you know I what you know, <laughs> and you know what you don't know. How well it's okay, but, it but wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, then there's, you don't know what you don't know. Okay, that makes you stupid, ignorant, and insane, because there's a whole universe of knowledge out there, of wisdom out there that you're not even aware exists. Okay, and then there's, what you don't know, you know. And to me, that's where I start thinking that's where the visions come in. Because whatever it is, whatever the universal intelligence, I know me and you have had a conversation about God, you're not a believer, I am. I, t I use the word loosely. Yeah. I don't believe in a supreme being well, sitting think, over pulling puppet strings. I, I don't we're believe more that. closer than mm. they think on that because I, I don't necessarily believe, I do believe in God. I just don't necessarily believe it to be, I, I don't know what it is. It's, it's, so my point is, is that to me, everything that you need to know to heal yourself, including your ankles, my friend is within you but you don't know it my job and what this is all about is to teach you how to learn to become conscious right of what it, of what knowledge you need to have to make yourself well and honestly most people don't want to go there they don't want to know that answer and they are afraid of their own power well, I think this is similar to the whole subconscious to the ego connection no. too right I mean you don't think that those are similar that human beings are very maybe that I'm not saying that it's not the same thing. I'm not saying it's the same thing. I'm just saying that maybe that people in the past have been looking at trying to bridge those two connections that maybe they've been looking at it wrong and that this is more well, accurate. I, I, I the, think it know. is accurate. I think it is probably closest. I'm really sorry. That's Ellie. okay. <laughs> um, I think it's probably closest to say the subconscious because one of the things we talk about in the work a lot is that, um, you know, we have to work with the invisible. And when I say we're working with the invisible, I don't mean invisible spirits and shit like that. I mean the invisible beliefs and things that you do. You know, my thing is humans don't know what the fuck they're doing or why they're doing it. Right. We just do it impulsively. So what what drives behavior? What drives all kinds of things? You know, my, my teacher, my energy work says all the time, there are no such thing as miracles. They're just things we don't understand. Yeah. You know, so to me, is it, are you looking for a miracle? Or are, are you looking for um, 
a specialist? You looking for somebody that has the right knowledge that's going to take your pain away? Or do you just not know how to access that answer within yourself? And so for all the folks listening out there, this is not the type of thing where if you just want to put a crystal in your bath and expect your problems to go away, it's not that kind of <laughs> No, it's not. Which is good. And that's what I like about it. And that's why we're here talking. Because for me, I feel like there's too much of that and not enough of this. Well, and whether those people believe it or not, or science, it, it, the fact is, is there's a lot of connections that people aren't making with their own personal demons and and these their own personal you know you know like you're saying illness i mean this is this is a huge thing for me because i'm willing to do whatever it takes to try to make myself not be in pain anymore and i'm sure other people feel the same way well you know like ali had referenced um one of the reasons why i started writing this book and started running the groups on letting go was because i had a i had a this was actually a client i had when i was working up in augusta maine that um you know, I'm doing our energy. I got my hands right in our energy, you know, mm -hmm. and I could feel it. And I said, you know, just let that go. And she was like, I am. And I was like, no, you're not. She's all intent. And she's, yeah, I am. I was like, no, you're not. I can feel it. You're not. Yeah. And she got kind of mad at me. And she said, she, oh, I, I, I'm trying. Yeah. I don't know how to do it. Just tell me how to do it and I'll gladly do it. That's the thing. You, I left you there. I left there and I said, no, what I said to her was, there is an answer to your question, but I don't know what it is. And I went on a fucking mission. And when I finished my apprenticeship, I did a two-year apprenticeship in shamanism. And my teacher asked me when we left. She said, what are you going to do? And I left there in December of 2009. And I said, I'm going to write a book on letting go. But I didn't have the answer yet. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to tell other people to do it. So I started to pray on it. And I started an experimental group with lab rats. And Allie was one of them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, okay, I can't write a book of ex with any level of expertise. I mean, I do have a scientific mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can tell. So I, my thought was, okay, I got to stop playing with some of these ideas and throwing these things out. And when I pray, the gods answer me. I don't know why they do, but they show up and they, they show me shit. It ain't enough just to get the information. You have to learn it. You have to you have to walk in that. You have to process that. You say, I have to learn that before I can teach it. So, basically, um, all of this is about how do we learn to let go. Well, number one, we have to learn what the hell it is we need to let go of. Then we have to learn what the hell we're doing, why we're doing it. And then we have to learn to take dominion of our kingdom our kingdom, all of the broken parts, the inside of ourselves, right. and bring them together. And then the power, the power of that is beyond comprehension. Way more than I can even put into words yet. Right. Yet, because this is always ongoing. Right. But I can guarantee you, this will do more than end your suffering. It will do more than end your suffering. It will actually allow you to be fully remembered without your pain, not that you won't have the experience, but you won't have to carry the wound. You don't have to carry the wound anymore. Imagine that. So how much you won't you know, have to carry the wound anymore. How much do you think of, of, of that is carried over into the afterlife? Just if you believe in the afterlife. I'm, I'm, I'm not a solid believer, but I, I do kind of believe it. It's, it's, it's well, I do because they show up in my room. Show, well, but I will tell you, but all me, of it's, it. It's, it's not all as, of it. Yeah. You think you take it all? And do you think that that's what... Are, this whole thing that people are discussing, you know, heaven, hell, purgatory, that people are just taking the shit that they couldn't work out from their life before over onto the other side. Yeah. And then they, because energy doesn't... Yeah, I'm not This convinced. is a fact. Energy is not destroyed. It's, it's just, just transferred. changes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for anybody in the science community to even argue that, they can't. Because I'm not sure. Um, I have my... I, I'm Police. not sure. I'm, I'm okay with saying I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's good if enough we, for me too. If we li here. I don't know if we literally live it over and over again. But this is where the conversation of oneness becomes important. Because does it matter if you, Mark, if your soul dies with your pain yeah. and then is reborn into a new life to continue to solve your pain? Or does it just go into the primordial ooze and come out through your descendants? Right. Is it passed down through the DNA? The energy work indicates so. Yeah. Everything that I've learned in working the energy shows that it comes down through the DNA, not necessarily past life, old lives, as much as it is the generational factor. 
your dharma is probably your old man's karma. Right, right. You right. know what I'm saying? No, it makes sense. I mean, and so, and, and I know that this is, this is interesting because I think you've got a very, very, uh, very logical approach to this, which is what I like so much about because that's that's what I can connect to, and I think a lot of times people have a harder time <laughs> connecting to the stuff when it, it seems so out of reach. So when you were saying hippy dippy before, it, it, when people feel that they don't, they can't make that connection. They can't uh, they can't uh, find the realism and the gr- gr- grounding, and I feel like this becomes a lot easier for people to 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 have that substance. So. That's one of the things I was going to mention. A lot of the stuff out there doesn't have the grounding. Everyone wants to be up in the upper levels and thinking that everything has been let go of while having no idea what's actually going on. Well, first of all, um, that's true. That is true. We all want to feel good. We all want to rise above it. We think we can rise above it. Vibrate above it, right? Which is a great, which is a great (laughs) theory, but is it possible? Because my thing is, one, what good is? I mean, I've read every, well, not every book, but I read a lot of books, you know, on spirituality, on past lives, on metaphysicals. I've read a lot of them, and the biggest thing that has always frustrated me is that how do you apply it? If I'm going to say words to you, like oneness. Yeah. Everybody likes to talk about it. It's a beautiful word, but what the fuck does it mean? And how are you going to apply it? Right. If I say um, love, just love. Love instead of hate. Trust instead of having fear. Those are all beautiful ideas, but how the fuck do you do it? Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so if I, can, if I cannot <laughs> give this material to in a way that you can understand why don't you trust and what are you afraid of and help you work through your demons and your bullshit so you can get to a point where you can say, oh, this is what it means to trust. If you can't use it, what fucking good is it? I don't give a shit how poetic it is and I don't give a shit how beautiful it is and I don't give a shit how good it makes you feel when you're in some meditative state when you're completely ungrounded. It's not effective in you living a good grounded fully expressed life so one of the problems i've had a lot of my critics are my work's too dark nobody wants to go to the place i'm going to bring you because i'm going to bring you right to hell's door because until you meet that motherfucking beast you're not going to overcome you're not Mm. going to overcome it makes sense you know and um that's why i say i could i could i'm a pretty good talker honestly i can sell pretty good Right? I could sell you a fucking vial and tell you that this will save all of this will right. cure all your ailments in life and I could sell that goddamn bottle for a thousand dollars, but you think I could sell that fucking <laughs> ding <laughs> Ding <laughs> you think I could sell that package for hundred and twenty dollars because people don't want to look at their shit. Right. Well I'm sorry. Yep. That's where it grows from. That from which it is will grow is a universal law. If you believe you're not good enough yeah. Then I don't give a shit what kind of pretty words Doesn't you put, or how many crystals you put oh, in yeah. your bath, or what you do. That belief is what your experience is going to grow from. My job is to help you fucking go right down to that fucking nitty gritty lie, face, face, face it down, and find out the truth of what's behind it, so that you can remember who you really are. Yeah, I think that's huge. I don't think yeah. there's enough of that for people. Even well, if even if you're a person who didn't believe it, it, that it could life. work. Uh, I think that is enough in itself. Mm. I, even if you're like you don't subscribe to it, it still is 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 value enough to see. You need to make those connections because I think people aren't looking at themselves enough, uh, and they're quick to look what everybody else is doing. Point fingers. Well, the other thing too, with a lot of the other work out there, you'll have that, you know, realization if you really go searching for it that oh I have this belief that I'm not good enough you can use your mind to brainwash yourself into thinking oh I don't believe that anymore but that's still there vibrationally you can subscribe into all like the think positive thoughts and everything will be okay jump in the net will appear but if deep down in your subconsciousness and your core belief system you don't really buy that you're just trying to that's another thing where this actually helps you to become very real with yourself and figure out exactly what's going on instead of just doing uh, behavioral modification or thought modification that you have. You're right. Because I'm going to tell you something. All of that will work for a short period of time. If you think Mm. to yourself, okay, I am good enough. 
I am good enough. I'm going to act like I'm good enough. I'm going to I'm going to yeah. fake it till I can make it. But what happens when it fails? And it always will eventually. It will fail. And then you're going to find yourself right back in it and eventually you're going to say this shit doesn't fucking work. So let me ask you this. Do, are you familiar with CBT? <clears throat> Cognitive cognitive behavioral therapy it's a new uh it's a newer you know uh, psycho psychology thing it's totally medical community psychology community thing but it's very it's not the same but it's it's it, it it's similar in the aspect that it's making you become uh, i think it works for more people in these newer therapies because it's making you uh, face a lot of stuff uh uh not probably as effective but uh <laughs> interesting enough that that is one of the newer schools of thought that is being applied, and it seems kind of similar to the aspect that they're they're it's just working, forcing people to be uh, more. It, it's uh, not, and let me tell you why it's not. Because you know this is why you know when I wrote the first book, the first book in this program is the language of letting go, and that's for us to help us recognize that the work is always between you and you. Okay, your problem is you, and you have a problem with you, and I want you to start identifying that you're the problem. Nothing else outside is the problem. Right. Okay, so then when you start to break that down, what's my problem? Okay, then you're going to start ping-ponging between your thoughts and your feelings. Okay, you're going to start to try to control your feelings with your thoughts, which is kind of what you're talking about. Right, right, right. Okay, it's like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to think my way out of this feeling. Okay, well, but wait, I, wait. I don't know if I've represented CBT. I properly, don't know it at all, so I don't okay. know. But I do. <laughs> I, just, I do I know wanna... a little bit about psychology. Okay. 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 I mean, I, I have a degree I just in behavioral science. Represent However, them. I have. Um, I graduated, you know, twenty years ago, so I don't. Um, I don't really know the new, and I don't study it. I don't follow it. I don't give a shit about it. I. I know from my own personal experience, of a, a lot, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot of trauma. Yeah. Okay. I've battled, you know, abuse, domestic violence, um, addiction. I mean, I was a full blown drug addict at twelve years old. Mm. So, you know, I get I get pain. Yeah. Pain I know. All right. Um, I did I went to therapy for a lot of years. When I was thirty years old, I said, Fuck this. I'm going back to school to find out what the fuck these therapists are supposed to know that are going to make me okay. Because either I can't ask the right question or they don't know what they're doing. So I'm going to learn it for myself. That's why I went to school. Mm -hmm. And you know what I found? The answer has to be in spirituality. Psychology alone just doesn't work. Yeah. Because okay. it's convoluted. That's what I was going to say. Don't you think? But, the, spirit kind of agreed, the, but the spirituality, <laughs> the spirituality part, part brought me into, it was too ungrounded. It was great ideas. It was great. Like I, But it wasn't taking my pain away. And that was my drive. I wanted to know what is supposed to take my pain away. Right. So after I wrote that book, you know, which came in, they gave it to me. The gods, whatever you want to call them, they gave it to me. Then came in the red book. And the red book was about something completely different. And the name of the Red Book is the language of change. And if you want to know what you're doing wrong, then you better know what the fuck it is you're doing. So, I had to, they had to show me, and it took a long time, that was the hottest book to write. What is going on inside of me? Is it just some little version of me I that I um, blocked or that I'm out of touch with? And then this conscious part of me, is it just that subconscious thing? Oh, no, there's way more going on in there. You know, I think it's the Bhagavad Gita. I did study some religions, too. It talks about the 10,000 inner citizens. Well, we do. There's a lot of inner citizens. And what are they all doing? And what are their parts? And what are their jobs? And they showed me there are five members inside of me, five members of the kingdom. But the kingdom is made up. One part can have 50 parts. There's you, the fool. As you know yourself, you're a fool. So much. Okay. <laughs> Foo. Okay. Foo. Okay. You have the you have the monkey you have the monkey mind. Yep. You have an ego that judges everything. You have aspects where all the little wounded inner children that live inside of you. You have archetypes that show up and t tell you how to act, and that's what when you're talking about, you know, expressing yourself, you're talking about archetypal energy. And then you have the beast. In all of these parts of the kingdom, all interact. They have a relationship. And they run, they run the show, and you don't know it. My job is to teach you what the fuck is going on inside of your kingdom because everybody play, every pot plays the same role in every person. Details are different. Stories the same. So another thing, too, with the name of your program, Everyday Alchemy, because 
you keep bringing up, Mark, the um, scientific and more psychological aspect. And Lisa, you've talked about the fact that it's called everyday alchemy and how the spiritual kind of plays into it. But before science as we know it was the thing, it was alchemy. And we're talking about some new stuff going on with psychology, but this is very ancient concepts. It is ancient concepts. And alchemy was, it did exist before um, science and religion separated. And the ancient alchemists used nature. They studied nature. If it's true in nature, it's true in me. Right. You know, what they show me, if it's true about me, it's true about you. Right. If I know myself well, I'll know you too. The first, study, the first uh, scientists of reality, really. Because they were really looking at things from an objective reality. It's happening to me, it's real for me. And, and I think that that was, like objective realism actually is, is, is kind of uh, a, a product of that. Which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I am. I, I, I'm just thinking about Ayn Rand. <laughs> you know, whole, you know, I gotta, I gotta say, thing. there's a reason why every one of the books in the program is called the language of, because mm -hmm. to me, language is what we build our reality on, right? I mean, we all we have to speak the same language in order to communicate. We put the same meanings on words in order to understand what each person is saying, right. but our reality is built on language. Okay, so to me, I have to really hone in and make the language right. And to me, the key word that you're saying right there is reality. Mm. You know, what is reality? What is real? I think it, for a lot of people, it's it's what they think they can see and feel and what they can measure. Okay, so you think and feel one thing, and you have a schizophrenic who thinks it. You know, that, that, that's the, that's the okay. So what's the objective reality? What's yeah. the what's the <laughs> definition of reality? Yeah, there is no real. De yes, there is. Reality, there is a is definition it? of reality. Well, yeah, I mean the Merriam-Webster definition. The definition <laughs> of reality is just something everybody agrees upon. So when you start talking about alchemists and you use the word reality, I'm going. I'm sitting there going, No, you got it wrong. Yeah. You got it wrong because the alchemists did not deal with reality. The reason why the ancient alchemists were very good at what they did is because real reality was very malleable. And then now, at this point in time, with all this, um, you know, social media and internet and everything, and the whole world is communicating and there's a lot more agreement. We might disagree on some things, well, that, that but we agree, point, we agree on very, we all agree your name is Mark. Yeah. Does it mean anything or that coffee. your name is Mark? <laughs> <laughs> Does it mean anything? No, I, I, I get what you're saying. It, it's, we it's just, just all agree it's just on a it. It's just a label, right? It's just we it, just right. all agree on yeah. it, and it's what makes the illusion work. Right. Okay, but alchemy doesn't work within the illusion. It works underneath the illusion. So then you have to start questioning what's real. Yeah, but when it comes to the scientific aspect, is is can something is this something that can be tested and tried in the same result every single time? That's well, it's very close uh, to the quantum physics. It's very close to the quantum physics. Yeah, and yeah. what's the first thing? I mean, oh, about, well, what's the most basic thing that we uh, you have to learn about quantum physics? Oh, well, that unfortunately, that every uh, every um, dimension could be different. There's a variance in the in, in the quantum reality. Well, the first thing I learned about what's the variance. Uh, 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 it's dimensional reality that each dimension that we live in is parallel to another dimension. You're thinking too deeply. Eternity. Would it be the observer? <laughs> it's no, the I observer. Mean, yeah. The most basic thing about quantum physics is that you know if you do the split light, if oh, you okay. study the split cat spl in the box that are alive. I got you. No, 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 not the, not the, not not Schrodinger's cat. I'm talking about the split light, which but is is it is is it is the same. But if you think about it, okay, reality is determined by the observer. Right. So if reality is determined by observer, does that make it true? True and real are not the same thing. As the, I, I know, as the okay, existential... Okay, so you, your, your reality, based on your experiences, the lies that you told, the story that you live by, and all of that, has created the illusion of your reality. Right. But it doesn't make it true. It makes it true to me. But it doesn't make it. I, no, no I it makes it that. true of your experience. It doesn't make it true no, no, at all I, about you. I agree with you. What I'm saying is, it's to to argue the other, uh, the other. Perspective. You can argue it. Uh, I don't. Hey, well, you can argue <laughs> it. I don't necessarily. You agree can argue with it till the end of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, my point is, is, and this is why I say, you know, it's like, yeah, you're only gonna go there when the pain becomes too great. Yep. Until then, you're gonna keep arguing it because your monkey's very active. 
Oh, no, what I'm trying to say is that I'm trying to argue the uh, what's the what's the term the devil's advocate. I agree with you. I I'm, I just I always like to have the the other perspective of what somebody else who's not here might say. And also to clarify, what the monkey character is that you're talking about? That's our dense earthly mind. That, Mental mind. Yes. Yeah. Puts meaning to meaningless things. Have I exhausted? Did I break you, Mark? No. <laughs> no, no I, That's the problem that I have. I, I break people I and they can't a, even talk anymore. I, I still have a, I, I have a, um, my, uh, my big question uh, would be in relation to uh, this whole like behavioral connection that we're all experiencing right now. I think there's a shift happening in conscious reality for all human beings in the, in the world. This is an opinion that I have. I don't know if it's true, um, but I'd like y your perspective on this, especially where you've had the experience of the like the shaman uh, shaman experiences in the, in the in uh, yeah, ayahuasca and DMT or whatever. I, I would really like your perspective on this one because I've never there's a lot of things I've been reading recently about. And this is not to go off on a super tangent, but I think this is all kind of interconnected. Um, it's gonna sound crazy. Aliens, specifically, because there is this discussion of what's real and what's not now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where CNN has come on the news and has said, uh, uh, "We have UFOs. They've entered U.S. airspace. We don't know what they are. Here's all this stuff. Basically, here's all of the objective reality for you to decide. We're not even hiding it anymore." And people are still like. And I have always been a very skeptical person. I'd never believed in UFOs or, or aliens. Or I, I'd like the idea of the a romantic idea of it. I think it's it's certainly possible. I think it's unrealistic that we're the only uh, species that lives in the in, in the universe. It's like uh, vampires, you know. But it's romantic. Or, or, but I, I, but the the idea has become significantly more plausible and realistic recently. Um, and the discussion of the whole thing is is that aliens are not necessarily from another part of the galaxy that they're from another dimension and that they're interdimensional beings uh, and that they're the same creatures that people are running into during these DMT or ayahuasca trips uh, or experiences or or experiences is the best thing that I can say because yeah. I've never done it myself uh, I've done LSD but from what I understand is nowhere near even close to the connection or, or that's what I heard and, and, and the thing is though is that now there's some like substantial substantive like fact in this the the cia and fbi and they, they were they were the government had been testing okay, this let on me, people let me stop people. you there let me stop you there okay because i i I'm really, not done yet i I, I, I I believe you're not i believe you're not i don't want to go on a tangent okay i i, I want to address a number of things first thing i want to make a clarification because when you started this question you started it with what i thought you were going down the road was about the shift about the shift in consciousness. That's, you said some kind of shift, like there's something happening, something And changing. then I went into another... And then you went into the aliens. So it's, <laughs> so, but I think they're connected, but, but I think it's more important. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, I, I got a lot to say about that. Um, aliens are one of those subjects I don't really like to talk about. Okay, cool. And you want to know why I don't want to talk about it? Sure. Because I believe in them. So I kind of do too, especially recently, and this is coming from somebody who's very skeptical and did not before, and this is all because it's like, I, like I, I I have a harder time with reality than a lot of other people. I have to see it. To I I don't I don't need to um, I don't need to give any food for adding to the premise that people already think I'm a little fucking nutty. Uh, <laughs> so I I'd like to leave the alien conversation out. No of problem. It. I got you. However. <laughs> And I'm not I'm not into conspiracy theories either. But that's the thing; it's not it's conspiracy now. It's fact. They have admitted it. The U.S. I, government. I do not have a problem with the, with talking about aliens. No, I know, I know. I but I do have a problem with um, getting caught in all this, in the, like yeah, yeah, being yeah. lied to in this conspiracy shit. It's like there's either aliens or there's not. Yeah. I believe there are. If you believe there aren't, I'm yeah. okay with that too. No, I I, I believe that there um, uh, are, and I just think. However, that I don't. Th you know, there's a lot of books written out there about the shift and about how um, you know aliens are going to scoop down and save us from ourselves. Do I believe in that? No, no more than I believe Jesus Christ is going to show up and save us either. 
right. I think that those are one have come from the same thought, mind thought. Maybe, but uh, I do want to talk about the shift because everything um, to me about this work that I do, even the energy work that I do, is about the shift. Um, the work, the energy work that we do is I call we call it the evolutionary energy. That is the energy that's coming through to precipitate the shift. Um, you know, in 2012, everybody was all freaked out. You know, the world was going to come to an end because mm-hmm. there was this, you know, shift in consciousness that was coming. I never felt that there was any deadline on 2012 for the shift, but I do totally believe in the shift. There was a lot of books that were written where they talk about that 2012 was actually the end of the shift. Um, I don't know what 2012 was or wasn't. Um, but I do know the shift and I will tell you what I know based on what they showed me. Sorry. Um, they showed me right in the, you know, early on in the visions. Sorry, I get a itch. (laughs) They showed me early on in the visions that, um, that the earth would split. They literally showed me the earth, the earth would shake and it splits dimensionally splits so that there's like one earth and as it splits, the other earth sort of just separates from it. And I don't think that the earth is literally going to split. I I think that it's a dimensional split, you know, in one earth, they showed me will, will hold the vibration of fear and the other earth will hold the vibration of love. And Holy the way I understand here. it is <laughs> this, and I don't think I'm alone. No, no. I don't think I'm alone. I think that there's a lot of energy work. There's a lot of light work is out there that, you know, not even that I'm really comfortable even putting myself in that category. I don't know why this fucking shit happens to me. But um, I think humans need a real fucking eye opening. They need to recognize we're trapped. We're stuck. We don't know what we're doing. We don't understand how to get out of the trap that we're in. And right now, there's a lot of stuff coming in to help us purge and get rid of all the density and the lies and the shit so that we can emerge. Because I'll tell you, you can't make the shift if you're too dense. And if you're too dense, that energy is going to hit you one way or another. But, you know, to me, you have to make that shift in physical form. If you don't make the shift in physical form, that energy is going to fucking drop your ass dead. Holy shit. I, I know we're, we're not going to go any farther than the politic thing, but this totally transcends that. It does. Because there's a huge division in the United States and the world right now. It is, is totally, it microcosm, it is totally related, and that's why oh, I mm. get fired I up like a motherfucker. And I know we're not going to Well, we start talking about politics because yeah. it, it, and the reason why I watch it, and I watch it closely, is because, now they started showing me this in probably 2008. Two thousand and eight was when they started showing me the shift. If you read, for you. if Watch you read, if you read the yeah. last card in that blue deck, like it talks, it talks, it talks directly about it. And that card was written in two thousand and eleven, two thousand and ten, two thousand and eleven. I wrote one? that card in that blue book. The very last card in it, the, the letting go, let it be card, speaks directly to it. Now, when they showed me the shift, they showed me the crumbling. They never, they never showed me what it was going to look like. I didn't know how it was going to happen. But when all of this stuff with the Trump campaign came in, it started to, it's like, oh my God, it's exactly what they showed me. It was creating, not Trump himself, but the fear that was coming in with it, the division that was coming in with it, all of the things that started to happen around it right. was directly in correlation to... Um, what they showed me in terms of what would what would happen before the shift. Shit is going down. And, what and you- as much as I... Nope. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's a tough thing to navigate. As so. much <laughs> as I dislike Trump, okay, I... He literally nauseates me. He makes me sick to my stomach when I watch him or yep. listen to him. I feel like he is, Both. I can, my human mind in my personality, which is quite strong, mm-hmm. can spew a lot of shit yep. about Trump. Mm-hmm. But there's another part of me that knows it's necessary. Yeah. It has to happen. Yeah. 
No, I agree with you. It I has to happen is... because, you know what, as much as you can look and say, this is wrong and, and this over here is right, none of it's right. Right. And none of it's right. Maybe this needs to happen to The thing that's the, happening, the I mean, of, really, if you look at it, is an mm. awful lot of lies being revealed. Mm -hmm. Things that we didn't think about, that the average person didn't even really give a shit about, is yeah. now becoming so big that, you know, people are, are picking sides. There's a lot of fear. Right. There's a lot, they showed me the fear. Right. They showed me the addiction. People they showed me the, the despair and all of that that was, com that was coming in with this. I just didn't know. I couldn't imagine in 2011 what was going to precipitate it. What was it going to look like as it happened? So here we are almost 10 years later, right? Almost. And it, this shit is happening. It it's is happening. Getting... Well, another thing with the as within, so without. Door. Um, even the changes with the earth, like the um, yes. Schumann waves, the vibration of the earth is getting faster higher. and higher and it seems like life is going by quicker and quicker and the poles other thing that yeah the uh, earth's magnetic poles shifted and the polarity of the earth is different so there's a lot of stuff where it all relates to everything relates to everything else it's all just mirrors of other things so. well you bring up a good point actually and this is where i say the one one of the things is the program is called everyday alchemy because every day is what we need to work with. We need to work with what presents every day. Alchemy just means the art of transmutation, the actual, to truly create change. That's why it's called that. You bring up a very good point. We can talk about the Schumann waves. We can talk about the pole, the poles shifting. We can talk about all of that stuff, but that's kind of, again, nebulous. Mm -hmm. right. I don't have an experience of the poles shifting. Right. I do not have, I cannot tell you, as an energy worker, I can tell you I understand the Schumann waves. But um, as a human walking the planet, it don't right. mean shit to me. You can even talk about the glaciers melting at the fucking North Pole. And I can look at that and say, yeah, that sucks. But it's not my experience. But what is my experience? My experience is the fact that we're having all of these dramatic storms. That, you know, these, the, the earthquakes and the, you know, the, wa the water rising and the higher temperatures and these things that actually truly affect my life. I can say, yeah, that I get, yep. that I can experience. So, but the thing that's really important to understand energetically is that we are children of the earth. We are just, like I say, if it's true about me, it's true about you. Yep. If it's true about the earth, it's true, it's true about you. And what is the earth doing? The earth is purging. Yeah. It's getting ready for the shift. Mm -hmm. And everybody on the earth is going to purge too. And that's why when, you know, you're doing your shit, you're doing your work, and you're looking at stuff, and you're, you know, you're being responsible with that, then yay. You know, you're make, you're passing those initiations, and you're clearing, you're raising your vibration to make that shift. But some people are going to dig right in. And look at how many people are just fucking whacking out. Yeah. Flip, People are whacking they're out. They're losing their you fucking know, minds. That to me is what that's what we're gonna Those see. More, we're gonna see more and more mm. of that. Yeah. Because there is a separation occurring. And it's getting more divided and it's getting, are getting more, more divided. And more uh on their side of things. Which is why this thing was so important to me because I I am very uh, in a lot of things. We won't get into the political aspect too much, but I am very left in a lot of things. But there's also a lot of things I think, uh, whether you're politically right or politically left, it doesn't matter. What's happening though is that division. When we need to be finding more common ground be with the guys that we don't get along with, with, the people that don't get along with us, we need to be starting to have more of an understanding of, of where we're coming from. But also, we need to be looking at ourselves. And that's well, we do. And the thing is, is the world is full of all kinds of really interesting mirrors. Now, here we got all this thing that's going on with Trump. Whether you're on one side of it or the other, I don't yep. care. But I just heard on the news today that in Ukraine, Ukraine just voted in a new president that is a actor on a show <laughs> where he is this president. And he won, like, by... He plays a president on he TV. He plays a president on TV in <laughs> he, Ukraine? In Ukraine. And they're like... And they right. elected <laughs> this guy with no what? political experience. This The shit you I saw it on news this morning. No political experience whatsoever. He was just elected by an outrageous amount of the majority of the country voted for this guy to be president. Okay? So oh, now no. the, the concern is, is because he has no political experience, 
Yeah. Russia is going to be all over him. And Russia <laughs> is going to manipulate this so bad because Ukraine fought like a bastard to get separated from Russia, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> so now you got this guy who's completely inexperienced and is now, they are afraid, going to be wooed, you know, or get compromised from the Russians. And the Russians are going to end up taking control of Ukraine again. Yeah. Now, does that sound a little familiar of what might be going on in other parts of the world? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I find that quite interesting. The other thing, to me, because it's not just happening here. It's happening. It's happening everywhere. everywhere. I mean, look what's going on in Argentina. Yeah. You know, but, or even Europe. Look what's going on in, you know, in Britain. Um, The other thing. um, Brexit and all that, yeah. Um, Exactly. But the other thing that's interesting is this conversation I've been watching. You know, the Mueller report was just released. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about politics, but I think this is relevant. So now the Democrats, which I think are being total fucking wusses personally. Oh, yeah. Like always. The Democrats (laughs) are having now they wanted to have these hearings and nobody wants to talk about impeachment because it's not politically, you know, it's not, it doesn't seem politically smart to start impeachment hearings um, because they're afraid if they do that, they're going to strengthen Trump's base and that he's going to win re-election and the impeachment's going to be, um, it's going to fail. That's fucking it's gonna, all going to blow up in their face. They're worried about politics. They're, they're f- afraid. I mean, to me, this is so simple. It's like they're just afraid. They're afraid. Rather than the standing... on the wall. It's yeah. standing in <laughs> their, you know, really getting into their sense of responsibility, what their job is, what the facts are. Mm-hmm. To say, I don't give a shit if it's good for me. Or good for politics. Or good for the Democratic Party. This is why I say there really isn't any, it isn't right on either side. where my libertarian friends are smiling. So to me, it's like, (laughs) I mean. It's like fucking amen. (laughs) To me, it's like, excuse me. You don't have to fucking, you don't, you know, you shouldn't be worried about that. That's not your responsibility to be, to be worried about the future of the Democratic Party. Yeah, yeah in politics, shit. but we are at a critical point. In We're talking national security. We're talking about important shit, and the goddamn Democrats are afraid that fucking they're not going to win re-election in 20 ways. In 2020, sorry, motherfucker. Yeah, it doesn't matter. This guy committed crimes, and you don't have to talk to Mueller because right. Mueller just fucking produced a four hundred dollar, a four hundred page report. Right. You don't have to listen to him. Talk to the witnesses. My, I understand my the hearings. Super conservative Republican guy, by the way, Robert Mueller. Just for the record, I know he is. I know <laughs> he is. But to me, it's like <sighs> they should do the hear, do some hearing, so that the public can understand what that report was about. Right. But what they're and the only reason why I'm bringing this up is why they're not doing it is because they're calculating, they're projecting, they're predicting, which is what politics is all about. It's exactly but right. But in reality. If you look at what's happening in the world, how we are trying to evolve spiritually, no. It's no, no time to be worried about your own ass. Right. It's time to do what's it's not right. It's time for a fucking chess game. We, we need to be real. We you need know, to be mm. open. We need to be honest. You know, we funny. need to figure our fucking shit out. There yeah, was, a, there was a, a congressman that was being interviewed, and he said, uh, I don't want to play checkers. I want to play chess. And I was like, that's the problem. That's the this problem. This ain't a fucking chess game. It's not a fucking game. This is reality. The bottom it, bottom line <laughs> is, is that's wrong. You know, it's like, I know a lot of people that are Trump supporters. And my thing is, it's like, I don't care. You know, I can, I can, I can accept that there people have policy differences. Yeah. Huh? But this guy's committing crimes. He's, he's, he's blowing up the norms of everything we've done in this country. Mm-hmm. My thing is, is if you truly, like Nadler was on TV saying... I believe these are impeachable offenses. Yeah. But I'm not going to start impeachment hearings That's until insane. I get all the facts. Then, because they That makes scared. them just as bad. It does. <laughs> it really it absolutely does. does. Uh, it's like, do what's right. And this is why uh, this is why during the election, the why what happened happened was because everybody was obsessed with political party and people and, and, get, and they forced Taylor Clinton down people's throats, people they want to vote for, and, and, and they just thought they knew what was best for everybody. And the reality is, is this political two-party system is bullshit. It, you, you don't know what's best for everybody. Not everybody wants to vote the same not everybody wants to do those things not everybody wants to vote for the lesser evil and unfortunately y- 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 people are waking up they're becoming real yeah real but there's a lot of people and, and but there's the, it, don't you think that it's really dangerous when the the populace votes out of fear yeah then isn't it really dangerous when our politicians 
politic out of fear. fear. Oh yeah, I do. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah, but I think that the problem is, is it's both parties' fault. I think we stuff. should look at Marianne Williamson. I'm really excited. I want to hear what she has to say. Hey, well, Marianne I, Williamson's running for president. I wish we could pull it up or something. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll see if we can get her on the sh- on the show. Hey. I, I'm I mean, all about I'm, Marian Williamson's hey. a very yeah. well known author. I, I, that, that, I'm, I'm all about it. I mean, I, I would. I, 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 we're trying to. I mean, I've already uh, reached out to a few uh, uh, candidates, and I, I think I've got like a warm uh, lead on one of them, and whatever leads up. But I'll take whoever. I don't care whether they're, you know. Uh, whether I agree with them or I don't, I, I just want to have people on the show that we can have real conversations. I think this is important. Uh, I think it was great uh, you coming on and, and, and spending the time with us today. And I can't thank you enough. I think this is huge. Yes, thank you. Uh, for there's not over. enough real thank conversation, <laughs> no happen, real substantive dialogue. It's the shouting. It's the dividing, like you're saying. It's people online standing on their soapboxes going rah rah rah. I'm right, and and uh, I think at the same time they're not looking at themselves, and there's no real. Well, you know what? As much as I dislike Trump, (laughs) (laughs) I'm an awful lot like him. Yeah. And um, that's hard to look at. Yeah. That's hard to look at. It's a huge thing to say. And um, I think all humans could take. I have to. Mm. I have to learn from him. And to me, we'd all be better off if we did. It doesn't stop me from bitching about him. Right, right. I wish I could say I was a greater person. That's a great thing to say. I think that's a really (laughs) introspective thing to say, and I don't think enough of us are doing it. I think a lot of us are quick to point the finger, asshole, and this. But how many of those traits do you carry on? How many of these things do can you find in yourself? How many things about yourself can you find? It's easy to point the finger. It is. But it's not not so easy to point the finger at yourself. Now, one thing I do know. Is nothing I'm going to do about Donald Trump. But I have a lot I can do about those same, I don't know, character defects that I have. Yeah. And I try to look at it that way. I try to remind myself that um, I know this is all happening for a reason. Right. Um, Scary, though. But I still don't like the guy. But there's still parts of me I don't like, too. Well, and that's it. I think that's the good takeaway from yep. this. And I, you know, me too. I'm not a fan of uh, of him at all. I'm very anti-Trump uh, in a lot of aspects. But there are some things that I did want to take from the fact that when he became president, there are some things that like that aren't all bad. There were some things that were a positive of this presidency, and I will take them as it, even if it's just people are changing and being forced out of their comfortable spaces, out of their safe spaces, whatever it is. I think that it's important at the same time, uh, like the hemp policy changes and stuff because of this literal political grenade that's happened um it's making everyone it's changing everything well you know uh, what forcibly oh just with what you were talking about the two things that i was thinking of in regards to the cards and the write-ups that you've done is the uh world is your mirror and adversary versus it's funny i was thinking i was thinking that too um i had a thought but i lost it sorry um (laughs) Totally lost it. Sounds like me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So can I put a plug in for the program? Yeah. Um, I just want to say, for anybody who might be interested, um, what the program is. Absolutely. Um, The program consists of three books, three decks of cards, and uh, a pocket guide. And... um, the whole point of the is as you work. <laughs> you want me to read from the no, and it has a user's guide. Oh, and it has a user's <laughs> guide. Yes, it tells you how to use it. And the whole point of it is is that you work with what life is presenting you, and as you're getting triggered and processing, you know, you pick cards on that, and it, it comes with instructions on how to use it and everything like that. So different than reading a book cover to cover, what you read, and you know, you might find life altering, but then you put it on your shelf, and a month or two after you're done reading it, it's you know, you kind of forget about it. But well, the cards are constantly reinforcing it. So I think that it's um, that's it's, huge too because it's, it keeps it, it fresh. It's helpful in, in a different way. I didn't know they were going to come in as cards. I thought I was going to write a book, but it came in as cards. Um, and I don't have a website or anything like that. I do have a Facebook page, and my Facebook page is just Lisa Eastman author, 
and Perfect. Facebook. Because I was going to be that. I was going to say very important so that people can go on there and the likes and all that stuff, but at the same time be able to reach out to you um, because I think this is huge. I think that this is definitely something that, um, especially for people from a spiritual walk of life uh, or a uh, behavioral, um, uh, there are people that are interested in behavioral um, uh <laughs> you know, personality stuff and, and behavioral psychology. I think this is huge. I think that this bridges a lot of that stuff and it is incredibly substantive from my own personal perspective. And this is coming from somebody who has a very strong affinity for uh, science and not always uh, things outside the realm of uh, the no uh, what people would consider super sciency. Mm -hmm. I think that this is huge in that direction where it becomes very, uh, very real and uh, very uh, <laughs> helpful to, to, for me to... Uh, relate to, I guess, is where I'm going. <laughs> so the other thing, too, that we've discussed in group with this is that a lot of this work is more esoteric work and the difference between esoteric learning and exoteric learning, which is, I, I've been hearing a lot of and I keep meaning to interject and say that, but then the conversation goes on to something else and I forgot about it. But a lot of the things that have been discussed are different like behavioral exoteric approaches in learning and how to help ourselves with that avenue whereas this is very esoteric with asking ourselves the right questions and yes actually that's crossed my mind a couple of times throughout this conversation too and it is a very important distinction it totally is esoteric and a lot of people i think just for clarification for definition sort of exoteric learning means that you learn it externally so you know what people t what you are taught you know what I mean mm -hmm. and esoteric learning is that um, that's why I said you know what you know mm -hmm. you know what you don't know you don't know what you don't know and you don't know what you know esoteric learning is how you find out what you know that you don't know right. so the answers come from within you ask the right questions you search within yourself you find it vibrationally and you find the truth not like oh i know this it's like i know this right do you know what i mean yeah yeah and um i think that's huge though it well it's, there's, it's there's the only thing that works it, i know what i was going to say and you were talking about whatever you were talking about in terms of you know the you, you keep throwing this word behavioral in and because mm -hmm. I'm very specific about language you're kind of throwing me off a little bit with that um, you know you say you're of a science more of a scientific mind I am an it very analytical person always was always the one in class going I got a question I got a question yeah um, if things don't make sense to me everything has to fit into a framework if it you know you can't give me a random idea and expect me to believe it I has to fit into a greater puzzle that all makes sense and is all associated and coordinated well, it's logic based not faith based that's what I like about it I guess that's but, where I was going well you know it's both but you know my focus really isn't any of those things my focus is does it work yeah does it work because you can talk about faith like I said you can say all kinds of well, let that go or blow, you know you are love mm -hmm. surround yourself with a blue golden ball of light or whatever the fuck they say mm -hmm. you know <laughs> you, you can do all of that but it doesn't really work right. I'm not saying that God doesn't listen to you and that you can't protect yourself and you can I'm not saying that none of the, uh, that stuff is inherently bad I'm saying it doesn't work right. at least it didn't work for me and I did it all Mm -hmm. I did it all, trust me. Same to be said with the science stuff. So then. to me, it's a matter of what works. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at a lot of the metaphysical material, I th I want to throw... I've sat and listened to, you know, very big authors and, you know, I'm not going to throw any names around here, mm -hmm. and left mm -hmm. spitting, throwing shit across the car so pissed because it frustrates <laughs> me because it's like, that's great, and I don't even want to say it's wrong because it's not wrong, but it's not the whole story, and it won't work right it just won't what not really like i said it might make you feel a little bit better you know what i mean to brush off your auras and say okay you know i cleaned some shit off you that's great you know or, how do we or, get there <laughs> but the, my thing is it's like if but i i'm i i don't do anything lightly when i drank i drank hard when i did drugs i did drugs hard when i started smoking cigarettes i smoke cigarettes hard when i do something i do it hard and when i go when i got into this kind of work I do it hard and I'm not going for some feel-good bullshit I'm not I don't give a shit if it's spiritual psychological or anything I don't want to just feel good I want to be 
who I am. I want to be my best. I want to thrive. I want to live big. And I don't mean big with money and all that. I mean the big expression of who I am. You know? So I'm going to go in deep. I'm going to the wound. I want to find the wound. That's what I'm going after. The wound, by the way, which most of these people say can never be healed. You know, Caroline Mace, love her to death, love her work. But in her work, she says, there are some scars that can never be healed. And I call bullshit on that. I don't believe that. I believe everything can be healed. So yeah. that. That's huge, though. I mean, that, that, that's, that's hope for people who don't feel like there is there that, you know. I, that's... <laughs> well, I, uh, I really appreciate uh, you coming today, and I think this was uh, fantastic. Um, I think it, uh, it certainly you know answers a lot of questions for me, but I also like to. Uh, I think we we both uh, we'd like to do this again. Well, yeah, I really awesome. appreciate it. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks.